And now at the center of the zero experience, Hunter Biden scandal and Biden, let's see, foreign syndicate issue. Well, is Hunter Biden's laptop, which reportedly contains, well, a lot of disturbing material. Now, computer repair shop owner John Paul Mac Isaac, he turned the laptop over to the FBI in December of 2019 after Hunter failed to retrieve it from his store 90 days later. And after facing endless slander and death threats, he even closed down his shop for a while and went out of town, he has now come forward to tell his side of the story. John Paul joins us for an exclusive interview. John Paul, sir, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Evening, Sean. Let's get into the document side of it. So there were, would it be a fair statement to say that what you saw concerned you, uh, that you desperately wanted to get this out of your shop, as you said? Correct. So, so on both fronts there, I just want to make a, a thing. Let me, let me go through the, the timeline with you, if I may, because mm -hmm. you, you handed this over to the FBI. They finally took possession of it December 9th, 2019. Tell us what happened. Uh, they came to the shop. Originally, they were planning to make a forensic copy of the drive. They couldn't guarantee that they could take the, uh, the equipment away from me. Uh, so when they showed up and they handed me a subpoena requesting the drive, the paperwork, and the laptop, I was overjoyed that they were going to basically meet my demands, if you will. I wanted it out of my shop, and I wanted some kind of paper trail, some level of protection from the FBI. So I was pretty happy that they uh, took it. A couple things happened during that exchange. A couple things were said that kind of, again, threw up some red flags with the FBI, um, just how they wanted me to handle it if he could, should come looking for it, how to contact them, how to stall the, whoever's looking for it so they could make arrangements to have the uh, equipment returned to me. Uh, it, it did kind of, uh, it, 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 uh, I was concerned. In, so December 19th, to remind everybody, because impeachment on the issue of Ukraine took place with President Trump in January of 2020. And I guess my question is, what you saw in terms of documents, did that seem relevant to you, to the Absolutely. debate that was explained? Um, well, I, I had seen uh, what would, again, I'm, I'm not an investigative journalist. It's not my day job uh, when I was fixing Max, but I, I saw some pretty compelling documents that uh, definitely showed a, a pay-for-play scheme going on between uh, uh, Hunter Biden and uh, his, you know, his business dealings in Ukraine. Joe Biden claimed that he didn't know anything about his son's business dealing. Will the documents that you saw contradict that, incontrovertibly incontro contradict that? <sighs> yeah, I, I, th I think uh, there, there was a lot of coordination. Um, you know, uh, I saw a couple emails coming directly out of the White House to uh, members of Burisma staff that, uh, you know, including the, the vice president's schedule, uh, any discussions that were going on about Ukraine and policies with Ukraine uh, were being sent directly to uh, Vadim, who's the number two at Burisma. Knowing what you know that was on it, knowing that you followed the proper chain of command, knowing that you were glad to finally get it out of your possession, but yet it was the smartest thing you ever did in handing it over for your own benefit and safety, and you wondered why was it not admitted as evidence at impeachment? Now, is the evidence that compelling, that it was that relevant? I, I assume my interpretation is that you saw a flagrant double standard existed. Am I right in my interpretation? Well, uh, what, I, what I saw was, uh, you know, uh, two, two young men that were definitely capitalizing off of uh, at least one of their father's positions to uh, drum up more value in, in their efforts to, to get more money. And it, it, was, it was definitely a pay-for-play scheme that, I, you know, again, I, I got my law degree at Rodeo Clown School, so I'm not, not Brian's better at the, the legal stuff, but the, uh, it looked like this would be something that you would want to have a conversation with to another foreign leader about, because this was a lot of money that was exchanging hands, like a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And you, sir, you, you still have a copy of the hard drive, is that correct? Correct. 
Um, would you be willing to share it with me? I would love I'd to have to talk public. to my attorney about that. You, you'll consider you'll take it under consideration. Yeah, I, 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 I have a very good attorney and he's there <laughs> no, to protect listen, me for, for myself. Listen, uh, sir, I, I all I've read about you and all I've heard that you said, you've been put in a horrible position, I argue unfairly so. And, you know, you, you just saw something. You said something. We ask people all the time, see something, say something. And you did. And it's it should not have happened to you this way. I hope is your business doing better now. Are you getting harassed less? Are you able to keep the doors open? Well, I'm, I'm getting harassed a lot less since I had to disconnect the phone and the email server. The, the business has been closed since November 2nd. Uh, for my safety, I had to get out of town about that time. I just didn't know the, the hostility in my area was getting to the point where I didn't want to incite any anger. So I, I thought it was best that I just close the business and then get out of town. Thank you for sharing, sir. It's an important story. You did do the right thing. You're, con you, you're I think, based on everything you said to me and what people have told me they believe is on it, that, um, that what you did is important, honorable, and I hope all the harassment of you stops and you continue you know, your life, hopefully, in anonymity and, and peace. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you, sir. Thanks for your time and letting me uh, tell my story. We taped this just before the show. Tomorrow, part two, the majority of the interview talks about video content. It's shocking. Here's a preview. I saw material of a very personal nature. Uh, I don't want to obviously go into it. I don't feel comfortable about talking about the, uh, the personal stuff. The bigger part of that interview, part two tomorrow, news that hasn't broken before. More Hannity after this.